Hey guys, it's no secret that I have done my fair share of sanding. I've sanded parts this small to these pieces as well and in between. I wouldn't be able to do it without something like this. I've sanded over 7,000 parts, guys, in the last four or five months. This has been integral to that, and it makes sanding actually enjoyable, believe it or not. So I'm going to encourage you to definitely come up with something on your own. I'm going to show you how I made this one, and it will be offered at the end of the video. So stay tuned, and let's see how we do it. Okay, thanks for joining me here in my little sanding corner. I'm gonna show you this. This was kind of the first iteration of this, uh, besides clamping this upside down, which I don't recommend ever doing. Um, and what I mean by this isn't random orbit sand, random orbit. Come on, vacuum. <laughs> random orbit sander. Um, I basically made this and then used this little thing to kind of clamp everything in place. And it worked well for me for a long time. Uh, I thought there was a better way. I, was, I wasn't really able to reach down into some areas here. I was getting caught up with pieces that I was sanding. I figured there was a better way, and there is. And it's this. Let me put this back up. It's this right here. This is what I've designed over the past, I don't know, two months it seems like. Um, we've gotten quite a few requests to sell these um, since I first saw it. So it is modeled after the Festool ETS-150. It's a basically a six inch orbital sander. However, look at this picture here. I've tested it with a barrage, if that's a word, I think it is, of different brands of sanders. Um, and I will say this, the Rigid, the DeWalt, and the Ryobi sander, I bought with my own money. I borrowed the other ones from family and friends, and I don't have a use for those three sanders. So I'm going to be giving these away um, within the next 48 hours on my website. Basically, all you gotta do is just buy something from the website. Uh, you don't have to necessarily buy this. You can buy a tool holder because they're awesome. Um, but you can do whatever you want to on that website. Um, and if you buy a tangible product, means I have to ship it to you in the next 48 hours, I'm going to send just one of those sanders to you for free as kind of like a thanks. So it's kind of like a giveaway, but you got to buy something to enter. Um, let's dive into this. Let me show you how I built it and uh, really the benefits of it. And I think you're going to enjoy it. Let's go. Okay, so we've got all the sanders set up, ready to do this test, really excited about this. I do wanna say one thing first. I do sand a lot of parts. You can see here by me showing you what I'm doing here, everything I make for this business, the CNC parts for the tool holders, the clamp assists, the French cleat brackets, the clamp brackets, you name it, I have to hand sand each and every one of these. I've been given suggestions about getting a drill attachment, all kinds of different stuff. This solution, upside down random orbit sander, works the best. And I'm gonna tell you, I thought it was so important that I thought I would take this to market. Now I understand not everybody needs to sand upside down for a million parts like this, but it does come in handy in your shops and that's why I developed it. So we're gonna start off with the DeWalt random orbit sander. Got this from Home Depot. Real simply, you just, Plug it in, turn it on. If you find that your power button isn't accessible through this, basically leave it off or leave it on and then plug it in while it's installed and it'll work just fine. However, most of these orbital sanders have a taper to them, a taper to the handle and that really helps. That's why it's designed the way it is. The taper fits in and then you turn it on and you're good to go. Now, of course, I'm gonna be showing you examples of what I do, but I know every one of you have had small parts made in your shop where you were like, man, I really wish I could turn this thing upside down at ease. And this is the beauty of it. Now, a couple of these models are battery powered and they don't have such a great taper as the other ones, but they do have a little bit of one. So they still work. And actually you could take them in and out and replace the battery as you need it and then compress it back in without changing any of the wing nuts and you're still good to go. That's a pretty cool feature as well. And to my surprise, a belt sander actually fits in this thing upside down. This was never the intent, but it does work. Again, you could probably tell it wasn't designed to fit a belt sander, but believe it or not, it works pretty well. So in case you need to do it this way, you can do this in a pinch, no problem. You see me moving to the Rotex model. This is kind of a beefier, longer handled sander, and it works well too. I actually had these prototypes sent to a couple of individuals uh, that are patrons of mine, and they have, it, coincidentally, they both have the Bosch sander that is kind of a rival to the Festool. It has a longer handle as well, and it worked great for them as well. So just wanted to throw that in there. But now you can see this is why I designed it, and the product I designed it for is my Festool. And this is more important than you might think, the compression. You put that taper down and then you pull it back a little bit. Then you install the front piece. 
just hand tighten is all you need and now you're good to go plug in the vacuum plug in the power source and then of course clamp it down to your workbench and now you can sand until your heart's content this really does make sanding more enjoyable i will say that and the results are really nice too Hey guys, I just want to pop in here and say thank you to those of you who supported us in this endeavor. I've gotten a few negative comments over the past about me being kind of an infomercial or what am I doing with this channel? Well, you know, I used to make project videos all the time when I was in my two car garage and now this channel's development has gone into product development. Now, in terms of being a YouTuber, yes, it's weird to say, but YouTube does give us AdSense to help us, you know, feed our families and put a roof over our heads. But this website development and this product development has done better for me than I could have ever imagine it is really kind of the bread and butter of what now provides for me and my family and my kids so thank you so much i just really appreciate you guys supporting us and hopefully you like this one as well thank you all right a little trade secret here about developing products at least for me anyway is that i actually use the packaging i have or that's available to me as well a guide somewhat to make sure this product is going to ship well this product was developed about a half an inch larger than what you see here at one point and i realized the box it was going to fit in was going to be way too large and it wasn't going to be very efficient so i trimmed it down a little bit the product still works with all of the sanders yet it fits into an exact dimension of a 12 by 10 by 2 box this is a pretty standard box from Ulines where I get my stuff from. And look how, oh, that just tickles me the right way. It just fits in there just perfect. And so that is something to consider is that how is how are your products going to you know go to market and how are they going to be able to be shipped? And you gotta take efficiency in well into consideration for all aspects of your business. So at least that's my advice to you if you want to get started in this. And you can see here we do ship quite a bit of few things and it's been fun to make these and this sander has been integral in making these products a higher quality. Speaking of satisfying, they look pretty nice on the CNC as well. And I want to tell you guys, if you're not sanding small parts, you can also sand all kinds of different stuff. I've got different parts here, Baltic Birch, some what look to be like drawer faces. And you can actually sand the edges really well. And then if you want to put a slight chamfer on them, it's so easy to do that as well too. I'll give you a close up here of exactly what it looks like. Hopefully you could tell. But yeah, puts a nice edge on your pieces with really precision control. Even longer pieces like this do really well on this upside down sander. Pretty cool stuff. So for a little tutorial on how to put this together, it's actually pretty simple. Everything comes flat packed, so there is some assembly required. I recommend using a glue and brads that are one and one quarter of an inch long. You basically take a small bead of glue and you establish the connection between these two pieces here with four brad nails. That is one of the sides. And then you're gonna have the front or the top of the piece go together. This is all pretty self-explanatory, but if you get one of these in hand, you probably will put this together without any instruction, but here it is just in case. So with both side pieces assembled and the top piece assembled, that's pretty much all you need. Now with the hardware included, you got some carriage bolts that go into the two slots, put the washers down and then put the wing nuts down, and that's one side complete. You can see that it does articulate pretty well, back, forth, front to back. And that's the goal because this thing needs to be customizable. So with the two sides installed, now it's time to install the piece that's going to hold down the top of the sander. So you notice that the carriage bolt doesn't go all the way through the hole, and that's by design. So you can put it on the edge of a work surface or into a dog hole, and then with a slight tap of a hammer, it goes in thusly and it is pretty much permanently in place there. Which is good because no glue is required for that application. Then you're going to take the head of that carriage bolt and put it through, establish it with a wing nut, and now you have a piece that's adjustable just in case your sander's taller or shorter. Again, that's what I was going for, keeping this really universal for most everyone's sander. And I'm curious to know if there is one that doesn't fit because as far as I can tell, everything looks like it's going to fit. And here's how you do it. So once everything's in place, you put your sander in. Put it a little bit far forward than you might think. You're gonna attach one side, bring it down, and then bring the other side in and go ahead and tighten that down as well. This is the most important part right here. Pull it back just a little bit, giving it a compression fit, then bring the top and forward piece down and hand tighten those and now you're good to go. You can do whatever you want. 
You can clamp this thing down with standard spring clamps, F-style clamps, but I like using my dog hole bench and using just one hold fast here. And that's all I need. You can actually see I'm actually shaking the workbench. It's so sturdy. Then let's say you need to take your sander out. That's pretty easy to do too. You can just use it upside down. Really, I mean, it's not that big. No, I'm actually just kidding. That would be extremely cumbersome. What you can do is you can loosen up just one of your wing nuts, okay? Typically on the left or right, doesn't matter which one. But I'll loosen up this one pretty good. And then I'll barely extend the arm and then I'm able to, whoop, there it goes. I'm able just to take it out. Now when I wanna put it back, it can just kind of fit right in. I can move that arm over. Tighten it back down and I'm good to go. Now, for your Mirka or Sure Prep sanders, which require your hand to be on the base for it to turn on, this will still work. Just unplug it, install it, and then plug it back in and you're good to go. Okay, so before you go, I'm gonna tell you a couple things. I did test this with a lot of major brands. I think it's gonna work on all of them, okay? However, if it doesn't, easily, satisfaction guaranteed, ship it back to me, I'll pay the shipping and I'll refund your money as well but I think it's gonna work on most everything. So, that being said, you know, I do want to encourage you guys to try something like this too. This was the first one I made for this and it made me come up with this product here. And quite frankly, I know that not everybody's sanding, you know, a bunch of parts upside down like this, but the capacity that you have now with this new apparatus, with this jig, to make your simple orbital sander a bit more functional, actually a lot more functional, and make sanding pieces pretty enjoyable again, really, it does. It's, it's crazy. Once you get it and get it installed, you realize, how can I live without it? At least that's how I feel. So I figured I'd offer it to the maker community. Guys, everything's down below. Links, all that good stuff, everything a glimpse inside, check it out. Really appreciate your support and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Until then, y'all be safe and y'all take care. <laughs> take care. <laughs> so I try to do everything in one take. Uh, sometimes I, I make a goof, but I'm gonna leave it in. So y'all have a good day. See ya.